Welcome to a tutorial video on Unity 2023. In this video, I want to talk about adding a game over screen to our ongoing project we've been doing across a number of videos now. So we've seen in the previous video how we added some simple enemy movement. And that was right here, our circle one. This circle now moves up and then moves back down. In the previous video, we also added a collectible for our circle right here, a yellow circle with the tag coin. One of the things we're doing when we interact with different systems within Unity is we get information from them. One of the systems we've been working with is the physics system. So this circle has a circle collider and the red square, right here square, has a box collider and a rigid body. Because it has these two components and because that other game object has another component, we can get information from the physics system. And so we saw when we wrote some code several videos back, that we can see if a collision happens. And a collision happens when two game objects, their positions overlap in space. So in our new code, what we wanna do is start to set up some different mechanics. We have the possibility now of doing collection mechanic and some type of avoidant mechanic. We have a collection in circle, and we have some avoidance right here with the black one. So what we wanna do now is we wanna set up a game over screen. But to do that, we need to start keeping track of some other information. So let's kind of combine a bunch of things I've been talking about across multiple videos now. So we've added some simple enemies and we've added some simple collectibles. We also have score right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move score across the screen and I'm going to just kind of tighten it up a little bit to maybe about there. And we'll kind of just tighten this whole thing up to about right there. Now, the reason I did that is because I'm about to add another text game object, a user interface of Text Mesh Pro to the canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this time I'm gonna do it via right clicking, but keep in mind, there's always multiple ways to do things within Unity. So of course we can always use the plus, um, but this time I'm just gonna use the right click. So I'm gonna click on canvas, come down to UI, and I'm interested in text, text mesh pro. And I'm gonna call this health text. So several videos back, or at least two or three videos back, we added a static class. And we did that because we wanted data to be maintained across the scenes. One of the things I discussed in that video is when we load a new scene, the game objects and their associated components disappear. When the new scene is loaded, the previous game objects leave. So we needed something that's going to contain data, our static class with our static fields that now exists across different scenes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add health up here. And I'm gonna adjust this to health 100. So we have score, and I'm gonna go ahead and just add a colon into this as well, right here. So score up here in the upper right and health up here in the upper left. Now, remember when we set up score that we had right here, square adjusting it based on the values that were from the static class. So I'll need to go and change those in just a moment, but what I wanna go ahead and do is clean this up a little bit. This is now called health text and I'm gonna go ahead and call this, so click, right click, rename, score text. So our score text is over here and our health text is over here. Now I'm gonna rename square right here, player character. So we have player character and I'm gonna rename this circle right here to our collectible and circle one will be renamed to enemy. So now we have a little easier of a time. So because these things are all renamed, now they make a little more sense in the hierarchy view. So score text and health text over here. So from this point, let's think a little bit about what we need to do to get to the game over screen. So in the previous menu scene, and when I move to this, it's going to ask me if I want to save, and I, will, I do, we were clicking on right here, this start button, using its on click as part of its button component. 
So very similarly, what we want to do is set up some code to have the scene manager load a new scene. Well, when should that occur? That needs to occur when health is below a certain number. And when do we check that? Well, we have a couple of different ways to do it. One of the ways we could do it, if I go back to sample scene, is we could have the player character themselves check the health every time. So when the update is run, it go ahead and checks it for us. Alternatively, because we now know that we can add game objects that have scripting components that don't really do anything, we can add empty game objects, as we saw with the menu. Alternatively, we could set up an empty game object whose sole goal is to just check the health that is now part of the static class. So let's go that route. So this time, I'm going to add over here the plus, create empty, and I'm simply going to call this health check. And I'm about to add a scripting component whose sole job it's going to be is every time its update method is called, it's going to check to see what the current health is. If the current health is less than zero, it's going to load the game over scene, which we've not set up yet. So over here, let's add a new component. New script. Call this health check. Create an add. Okay, get down here in assets. So down here in the project view. Let's go over to health check. Give it Unity just a second to reload things. Health check. Okay, and we can make this very easy. We don't need the start method. We only need the update method, and its sole purpose is to check if game state set up in a previous video and health set up in a previous video is ever less than zero, then it has one sole thing it should do, which is scene manager. And notice scene management got loaded in. It's now a library we're using. Scene manager load scene, and I'm interested in loading a scene by name, but though it doesn't exist yet, called game over. And that's all that this file does. Every time its update method is called, it's going to check to see, hey, is the game state, which exists as a state for the entire project, if the health is ever less than zero, go ahead and move to the game over screen. So let's go ahead and save right here. And that's all this code is going to do. So let's move back to Unity. And we'll give it just a second to reload. So we created a game object whose sole purpose is to exist, to have a little bit of code to just check health. Now, we could alternatively, because there's always multiple ways to go about things in Unity, put the same code inside player character. But I don't necessarily want to do that. One of the things I want to point out in this video is we can create little bits of code if that helps us better organize things. We can put lots of code in one file, but if it helps us to think through a project like something like this that's getting more complex as we go through these videos, we can divide up that complexity into smaller parts. There's no reason to have very large code files unless that's something we want to do. So in this case, we have smaller code files that just taking care of little bits of things, and that's a totally valid way of organizing projects. All health check is going to do is when its update method is called, it's going to check and then move over to the game over scene. Now we need that scene. So let's go down here to project view, go over to scenes, and we have menu and we have sample scene. Now I'm going to right click this because what I want to do is I want to rename this level one. Now I mentioned in a previous video that we're setting up a static class. One of the reasons we're doing that is because now we're going to have multiple scenes. And as soon as we get into multiple scenes, we're going to run into the error I pointed out in the previous video, which is say we need some data to exist outside of any one scene. So we have level one over here, and then let's go ahead and create. And then look through our options, and we are creating right here a scene and calling this game over. And let's load game over. And do I want to save level one? I do. Okay, 
So now we're over here in Game Over. Well, Game Over will look very similar to Menu in that we want to go ahead and return back. But where are we returning back to? So when we're at Menu, we're starting the game, which moving means we're moving to level one. In Game Over, what we want to move to is Menu. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we want to go ahead and create some new game objects over here. So I'm going to go ahead and create UI and text, knowing that it will automatically add the canvas. And then remember, anytime we want to use the canvas, we probably want to do it, at least in 2D space, on a camera. Then we tell it what camera in the scene, use main camera. So now it's fixed to this main camera area right here. And I've got my text, and let's kind of move it up here. And I'll make this a lot bigger. Move it roughly in here. Now let's go ahead and change text input to game over. And this time let's play a little bit about with font size. Now last time we just let it go, but this time let's say it's 36. Let's say maybe about 80. Yeah, that's a little better. It's a lot, lot bigger. So let's make its containing box right here a little bigger. Bring that in. And kind of like that. Now, we saw previously there's lots of different options here. So alignment, I want to make it kind of centered. And then let's come over here and make it vertically middle. So horizontally alignment right here, center, and vertical alignment right here, middle. Game over. And well, of course, let's go ahead and rename this to game over text. And then in Canvas, we want to go ahead and add a button. So let's add a UI down to button, text mesh pro. Let's make this a lot bigger right here. Put it roughly in the middle. Let's rename this game over button. And it needs some text. And let's add this re start. Now I did things relatively quickly in this video because in a previous video I covered how to do kind of each thing step by step by step. So now we have a game of button which has text that says restart. So if we play this scene it should say game over and show us a restart button which is perfectly what we want just right now. So let's go ahead and set up some code such that when we click on the restart button it sends us back to menu. Now to do that, we need to set up some code again that has that scene manager code. This time, let's go ahead and follow what we did previously. So again, multiple ways to do things in Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new empty game object up here. I'll we'll call this game over code. Let's add a new component, come down to a new scripting component. Same thing again, oops, game over code, create an add. Okay, down here in the project view, go back to assets. So this is our new game over code. Okay, now previously, just like we did the menus, we don't need anything here. And I'm going to call this back to menu. And all this needs to do is scene manager, load scene. What are we loading? We're loading menu. Okay, and let's file, save this code. Now, pretty similarly, let's go back again. And this time we want to add it on click. So let's go over to our canvas, come over to our button down to what's on click we're going to add right here at entry and then it needs to know what object so let's click and drag game over code drop it in here and it says what function so we need to know what function game over code so from the game object to its scripting component and there's lots of things listed but we are of course interested in the thing i just wrote which oh look it's not listed ah a little bit of an error here remember of course that by default, fields and methods are private. 
So I did not set this to public, so quick fix there. Set it to public so that other code can access it, including Unity. There it goes. Now it should show up, and we are, of course, interested in back to menu. And so that's it for the game over scene right here, such that we land on the restart, and then it will send us back to menu. Now we've got a little bit of problem in menu that I'm going to go now fix. So when I first loaded up menu, I of course want to save, then I had right here that when we click start, then it runs start game, but from the main menu code. So let's go find that file. Right here, main menu. And this previously loaded sample scene. I don't want that anymore. I want level one by name. Let's go ahead and save that. Now, notice the problem we keep getting ourselves into. Is I rename something and I have to go back and change it and I have to change something else. Potentially, a better way to organize all this, but I won't do it in this particular video, but we will revisit it in a future video, is we can keep track of all of this data that exists outside of any one scene in game state. We could have a list, potentially an array or another data structure, that has everything we want to go to, and then we simply use the fact that it's accessible everywhere to have what we want. So potentially we could set up an array of our different scenes and just say whatever the first scene is, go to that right here. Although we haven't set that up yet. But we start to see how, now that we have multiple scenes, how having something that contains that data that is outside of any one scene becomes really, really useful. Because now, potentially, if we wanted to, we could just say game state and then access the scene by name. But we're not quite there yet, but we're seeing how that's become really useful to us. So this is now level one. And what we need to now set up is how we get to the game over scene. So that means, of course, going back to scenes and going over to level one. Well, previously, when we had the collectible right here, it increased score. So now we want to do the same thing with the health, which is going to eventually get us over to the game over scene. So to do that, we need to go ahead and look at what this is attached to, and it's called square. So let's pull up square. And this has the code right here. So we saw that in order to set up a collectible, we have a game object that has a tag. One of the ways we use tag within Unity is to differentiate, to have a difference of one thing over another. Potentially, the player character, what it's now called, the previously red square, could bump into all number of things. And we need to know which thing am I bumping into, so we set up tags to do it. So we're now going to need tags for the enemy so we can set up some code to do that. So we're where we need to be, but this is a quick fix. So let's come over to the enemy, and it doesn't have any tags, but we need to know, hey, am I, tag, am I hitting this thing or another thing? So let's add a tag. Right here, we just have coin, click the plus, new tag. And now we're adding enemy. So we've got coin or enemy we can now run into. And let's come back over to enemy and tag this enemy. So over here in our new code, let's just set up a new condition. If collision tag is equal to, and what is it equal to? Equal to enemy, and we should do something. Well, we've got a pretty good idea of what exists right here. So when we're collecting coins, we're destroying them, we're removing a game object from the scene. It's not quite what we want to do with an enemy. We want an enemy to stick around, which means we're not destroying it. But what we do want to do is go ahead and update something else. So I'm going to copy this right here and paste it into here. So what I'm going to do, though, health equal to health minus 10. So every time we collide with enemy, we're going to decrease whatever our current value of health is. And remember, it's now part of the static class because it is a static field that we set up in a previous video, decrease it by 10. So the other thing we want to do, though, is we also want to update right here what the corresponding text is so that the player knows when the health decreases. So let's come back up here and do a previous thing. 
we want tmp underscore text, that's text mesh pro underscore text, call this health, and make this a serialized field. Remember, of course, that when we set up fields within C Sharp, we have different things that they can use to access it. By default, it's private, as we just saw in the little bit of error ran into with the method. We can also make a public, or when we're working with Unity in C Sharp, make it a serialized field. So let's do the same thing right here. And uh, we call this health text is equal to health. Let's add back our colon right here. Plus game state health. So conceivably, if we wanted to, right here could be that code that exists in another file that checks the health every loop, but we're not going to do that right now. So we're saying, okay, this is going to decrease by 10 and it's going to update the text. So let's go ahead and file save this. And what we need to do is for the right here, player character, it has a space for health. And oh, right here, we now have text, health or health text, drop it down right there. So now when we play, anytime we bump the enemy, which is going to be moving up and down, our health is going to decrease. And whenever it's less than zero, we're going to be immediately sent to the game over scene. From the game over scene, we can click the restart button. When we click the restart button, it will send us back to menu. Menu, because it now has start and quit, means we can now go to level one. So finally, we've set up a fairly complex series of code and game objects within Unity. So let's go to menu, start playing the game, decrease our health to see if that works, go to the game over scene, and then restart the whole thing over again. So yes, I do want to save. So let's start our whole game right here. Main menu, start, okay. So moving the red square around, I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard. I have a score of one. Boop, our health dropped. And now our health keeps decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. So what is going on here? Well, let's go ahead and stop this and look at this. So uh, when we're looking at menu, let's move over to level one and let's double check any console issues. Scene game over couldn't be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings or the asset bundle has not been loaded. Oh, so now we're finally looking at some issues we're running into. So let's go ahead and double check everything. We have game over, we have level one, and we have menu. But we're running into a little bit of an issue because it doesn't know where to go. So let's double check we've always we've named things correctly. So let's come over to our game over code, and this will load menu. Going to main menu, this will load level one. And health check will load scene game over, right here by name. So it says our errors, let's make sure it's not human errors, says that it's not been added to the build settings or the asset buyer has not been loaded. So let's double, double check it's been added to the build settings come down here to build settings. Oh, well, this is interesting. Notice we have scenes level one, scenes menu. Well, what new thing do we need to add? We need to add an additional scene. So right here, let's look at this order. This is zero and this is one. So let's go ahead and open game over right here. Add open scenes. So if we ever see this error before, first, of course, check our code. Second, look at the errors told us. There's something going on in build settings, pulling up build settings right here. And then notice our order is a little bit weird. So what we want right here is zero, one, and two. Now notice something important. In a previous video, I talked about arrays, and I mentioned that arrays in C-sharp start at zero. Well, notice our order starts at zero. So this is simply an array of the scenes. So what's going on internally is when we load a new scene, 
it's simply loading it from the corresponding array that it has internally. So we're starting at menu, moving to level one, and then moving to game over, and then potentially some other scene. So let's go ahead and close this right now. Let's move back to menu and play this again. We've got start. And if I hit this, boop, we went to game over. Now, something very interesting just happened. Notice that as soon as we started hitting it, our health immediately decreased right back down to zero when we jutted over to game over. We're going to fix that in a future video, but right now we know it's working. So restart, since it's back to main menu. So what we've done in this video is finally put a whole bunch of concepts into play. We have kind of a little bit of a game here. Of course, not very exciting, but some of a game. We have some collection mechanics and some avoidance mechanics. We're avoiding an enemy because it's going to decrease our health. And now we're increasing our score when we collect coins. So this means we can start to put more coins in the game and start to put more enemies in the game because now we have a game over scene that we will be sent to when our health decreases. And our health and our score are now going to be carried across scenes because they exist as a static class that's outside of any one scene. This means as we move into future videos that we can start to reorganize this. First part of that though is of course now thinking about how we tackle the problem we just solved. So I'm going to go back over here to level one and as we'll see in a future video what we want to do is stop it so that we can't constantly get hurt or if you've seen some game development terms before, you might be familiar with the term iframes or what's sometimes called invincibility frames. So what we want to set up is so we get hurt and then there's a pause or a little bit of a delay before we can get hurt again, which means revisiting in a future video our friend time delta time to keep track of time. We want to get hurt, then we want to be a little bit invincible for a very short period of time or pushed back and then we go allow ourselves to get hurt again, but we're going to revisit that in a future video. So to sum all this up, we're finally ready to start building in more mechanics. We've got a main menu, we've got a game over scene, and we've got a little bit of a level, which means we can start building future levels as soon as, of course, we fix that issue with the enemy. But we've got collection, and we've got avoidance, and we've got movement, and we're starting to get much more and more, starting to get more involved in our ongoing series on Unity, 2023. Thanks for watching.